In the realm of movies where characters switch places, classics like Freaky Friday, Like Father Like Son, The Parent Trap and Seventeen Again come to mind. However, my personal favourite growing up was Vice Versa, starring Fred Savage. Back then, I considered him one of the coolest people alive, especially with his role in The Wonder Years and his typical teenage girl problem. In Vice Versa, the storyline revolves around the 11-year-old son, Charlie, who accidentally triggers a magical transformation by touching a Tibetan skull. This mystical power swaps the bodies of Charlie and his dad, Marshall, leading to various comedic and hilarious situations. The movie sparked my imagination about how exciting it might be to step into someone else's shoes, such as being my dad or even another person entirely. However, as the movie progresses, it cleverly portrays the challenges and complexities each character faces in their new role. It's easy to think we could do things better if we were in someone else's position, but ultimately, the film highlights the truth that living another person's life is far more demanding and intricate than we might initially imagine. Life often unfolds in a way where we find ourselves yearning for things we lack, overlooking the fact that others might be struggling just as fiercely with challenges of their own. It's a common phenomenon to perceive others' lives as easier or more desirable, the classic case of the grass appearing greener on the other side. This sentiment resonates with the message from Philippians 4.11, I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances which emphasizes the importance of learning to be content in any circumstance. The verse reflects on the idea that true contentment is not dictated by external conditions, but rather by an internal state of mind. This concept is illustrated beautifully in the life of Paul, who, despite facing various trials and tribulations, found joy and gratitude by mastering the art of contentment. Paul's teachings emphasize the significance of being grateful for what one has rather than lamenting over what one lacks. Philippians 4.12 I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. By imparting this wisdom to others, Paul encouraged them to cultivate a sense of contentment and to resist the temptation of envy or coveting what others possess. This advice remains relevant even in our present day, underscoring the importance of embracing our current circumstances, appreciating what we have, and living with a sense of contentment and gratitude for the blessings in our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, through the grace of Jesus, we humbly stand before you, acknowledging our struggles with envy and comparison towards others. We ask for your guidance in finding contentment in our own lives, recognizing and appreciating the blessings we already possess. Help us shift our focus from what we lack to the abundance surrounding us. Teach us the true essence of contentment and gratitude, especially in relation to our material possessions like our cars and homes. May we learn to cherish and be faithful stewards of the resources you have provided for us. Instead of constantly yearning for more, let us embrace a spirit of thankfulness for what we already have. Forgive us for treating prayer as a transaction, where we ask for things without expressing gratitude for the blessings bestowed upon us. We are truly thankful for our salvation and for your unwavering presence in our lives. Thank you for being our rock and refuge, always ready to listen to our needs and concerns. We place our trust in you, knowing that you hear our prayers and will guide us towards a path of contentment and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name pray. Amen.